Hey guys, Youngblood with you for the 78th episode of the Inbox, starting off with our question from Shadows A to B, saying, I have a question STL, in the context of the Cutlass Black rework, how do you think the red and blue will be affected? Will the potential loss of maneuverability make the blue a less effective police patrol or bounty hunter? And will the red's ability to recover objective pods be hampered? Um, so, I, let's, let's hit this before we get into the second part of your question. Um, in regards to the way it impacts the blue, if you're talking about the ability just to chase somebody down and maybe be as maneuverable as like a gladius that you're trying to deal with, then yeah, you're going to feel a little bit more of an impact. That being said, based on the ship itself, I think you're going to see some benefits. You're going to be more durable. So if somebody's fighting back, you're probably going to be able to take a little bit more punishment. You also have bigger weapons and more of them, so you're actually able to throw a little bit more down the line and hopefully disable or kill the enemy if you need to. So I think there's a trade-off, and I think it follows in line with what's happening with the Cutlass Black. Um, you are going to be a little bit less maneuverable, but you're going to be able to deal and take more damage. Um, so it's kind of a trade-off. Now, as far as the red is concerned, um, I don't think that's going to necessarily be a problem you know if you're talking about recovering ejected pods um, most of the time you're probably not going to be flying full speed trying to do some fancy maneuver I mean because it's going to be tricky seeing that object enter your physics grid and then how it's impacted based on the speed that you're going and the way you intercept it I think most of the time what you're going to see is pods get ejected and will probably become stationary based on the little thrusters that they have on board um, so you don't necessarily need the same speed and maneuverability um, to be able to do that I think chasing down an escape pod is probably going to be less likely to be taking place in game so the lack of maneuverability that you're going to be seeing through this rework isn't going to have the same impact on the red um, at least that's my gut you also mentioned that you think um, want to know if a search and rescue is going to be profitable um, how do you think a red pilot and crew or crew member of any medical ship uh, will be able to charge players npcs they provide treatment to them um, I think it can be profitable. I think some of it's the way it's done. You know, for example, the um, the Endeavor is supposed to be able to serve as like a spawn point, and uh, you know, you can charge people, and they can pick which location they want to spawn at based on um, you know the prices and the locations of those locations in the area. Um, so I think things like that are going to be able to help you make money. Um, as far as like search and rescue is concerned. I think that's going to be helpful, but it's probably going to be more in the lines of either your negotiations with other players or, um, you know, missions you take on. You know, you'll probably be taking on missions that say, you know, this person went missing in this area. You're going to get this many credits for going and rescuing them, that type of thing. Um, you know, in just real life or just... I guess as far as PvP is concerned, when you're just flying around in the persistent universe, you know, if you come across somebody that's stranded, you can say, I'm willing to pick you up and service you and, you know, heal you up and everything. It's going to cost you this. Do you accept? If they say yes, you pick them up, they, you take the money and you take care of them. If they say no, you fly away and just leave them there. So I think there's going to be ways that you make money, but the way it's actually done is going to be kind of to be determined um, outside of the mission system, which we kind of have a pretty good idea how that's going to work. Uh, Nopalope says, how do Youngblood? In a moment of weakness, I picked up a whole E. I'm really excited to be a King's Space Truck. Um, but I was wondering what alternative role something like a whole E could excel at. For example, could it be a mini space station, excessively well-armed gun or missile boat, medical station, hive of scum, and villainy? Um, nice. Um, okay, so the whole E is a dedicated hauler. I mean, it, that's that's what it is. I'm not expecting really anything else out of the ship. Now, could the whole series be kind of modified? We need to see, um, and I think we'll get more information on that pretty soon. Um, you know, it, it, it's going to come down to... Does the ship just purely have the ability to carry more of the same cargo, um, the same cargo size hold, um, crates? That's what I'm looking for, crates. Does it just carry more of the same size crates as the smaller holes, or does it carry more or bigger crates? If it carries bigger crates, then all of a sudden you get into interesting situations. Like you could maybe have yourself like a ship moving business to where you bring people's ships to them from across the galaxy. Like those types of things. I think that's something that it can sell at. Um, as far as some of your, um, the things that you mentioned, um, I, I don't think it's going to be an excessively well-armed missile boat. I mean, you could potentially put some sort of like missile armed or, you know, auto turret type of crate on there if that ends up being a thing. But I'm not expecting the same level of flexibility out of, and like, uh, I, I, 
uh, versatility out of these crates that you're going to see in something like the uh, modules for the Cutlass. Um, you know, like so for a medical station, there's no good way for people to get into your cargo areas, so that's not going to be a good option. Um, you know, acting like a hive of hum, uh, scum and villainy. Like if you're talking like bars and like those types of things, like yeah, the interior of the ship's big, but you don't have those types of facilities. So what you're really talking about is what's actually available on the on the cargo area, and that's not easily accessible. So. Um, in a moment of weakness, you picked up the whole E. If you want to use it for cargo hauling, it's going to be a really great option for you. It's going to be an expensive option, but it's going to be a good one. Um, but as far as like it being flexible, that's not what the ship's about. You know, you may be able to tugboat or tugboat or tow ships at some point, but again, that's um, kind of to be determined. Really, you can only count on it doing cargo. Uh, Jedi Salamander Gaming says, "How well do you think the Aurora will be able to land on planets?" I think the Aurora land on plane is fine. Um, you know, it's a it's not a super aerodynamic ship, um, but that being said, it's going to be capable of flying fine. But specifically about landing on planets, you may be able to land in more locations using an Aurora than you would with something like a Constellation because it's got a smaller you know footprint, so it's less reliant on finding a good sized flat area. So you could probably land in more spots. So I think the Aurora is going to be pretty well suited to land on planets. It's just not going to be the most nimble thing while flying in atmosphere. Uh, Ezel Official says, do you know if we'll be able to bomb classic style? Say you want to take a factory of Arrival down, will you be able to regular bombs on that factory? Um, so if you're talking like carpet bombing or just dropping and letting gravity do its thing, I don't think we're going to see that in-game. Um, not only do we already have a lot of things that can do that job, like we've seen torpedoes talked about as being like a air-to-ground type of situation, um, I, I don't think that they're going to put that in from a... It's another thing that they have to develop, and I think the usefulness is going to be relatively minimal. I think most of the combat that you're going to see is taking place in space. So flying through space in a bomber that's going to actually be a typical like carpet bomber, not like a torpedo bomber, um, you know, all of a sudden then doesn't have a lot of versatility in what it can do. So I may be wrong there, but I don't really see them actually putting that into the game. A skinny Slim says, which ship is better for solo exploration, the Constellation Aquila or the uh, Freelancer Durr? Which one should I get? I uh, get the Durr all day, every day. Freelancer Durr is going to be an outstanding option. You can easily use it solo. You could bring a buddy along. It's going to be long range. It's got the facilities. It may not be as capable as an Aquila, but guess what? It's, the Aquila costs a lot more. It's got a higher crew requirement. The operational cost is going to be more. So when you're talking solo exploration, you can't really beat the Durr. Uh, Joseph Wolf says, hey, STL, I wanted to ask about modularity among the freelancer variants. Uh, and your should you buy on the Avenger, you mentioned that CIG plans to make the internals of the Avenger, Retaliator, and Vanguard swappable. Um, do you think it'll be able to pop a Dur or Miss module in my vanilla freelancer to go exploring or fighting? I believe the max is wider than the other freelancers, so it may be left out since it doesn't have the same exact hole as the others. I'm not sure how the freelancer update affected this possibility. So um, to clarify... You're able to take components from other ships and put them into other ships. So, like on the um, like on the Avenger line, for example, you can take the the uh, prisoner pods out, and you could just have more cargo space. Or you could take the Warlock module and stick it in because it's all the same shape. It's got all the same hard points. It's just what equipment you actually have equipped. The Vanguard's a different beast. You've actually got a swappable interior that you basically are ripping out of the ship and sticking another one in there. You're not taking individual components. It's an entirely upgraded middle section. Um, the Retaliator is kind of the same way. Um, they're more modules like you're seeing on the Cutlass, or not the Cutlass, the uh, Caterpillar, to where you're taking pieces of the ship, not individual things. So, you know, it's a little bit different there. When you start talking about the Freelancer line, um, you're right. The, the Max is a bigger v variant. It's got more engines. It's got a bigger space in the back. Um, so it becomes a, a kind of more complicated situation. So if you're talking about just the base Freelancer, and the question is, can you put on like the nose cones or whatever on the front? Probably. You can probably add something like an avionics thing to the front. It may not look exactly the same. You may be able to put like the avionics and the scanning abilities um, into your uh, interior components to help, but it may not be one to one. You know, when you start talking about the miss, you've actually got a hole cut into the top of your hole that allows for the replenishment system of missiles to go through. I don't know if you're going to be able to add something like that because that's a hole modification and that's something that makes that a unique hole. So it's going to be um, kind of complicated to see how they put it into place. I would say if you're talking about individual components, though, you can count on them going in. If you're talking about hole modifications, um, that becomes a little bit harder to predict. 
And our last two questions are patron questions, starting off with Rockseeker. Some backers purchase ships exclusively for resale in-game. What's your thought on this? Is it worth doing? Sounds like an efficient way to convert real-life dollars into a lot of UEC. Yeah, people are doing that, and I think it's going to be a really good way to make a lot of UEC, and I think some people are doing that to get around the uh, the UEC cap that they have in place. Um, you know, if you start talking about like a Banu Merchantman, for example, if you were to pick one up at $250, well, we already saw the price jump, and it's going to be a rare ship in game. It's even hard to get amongst the Banu, they say. So all of a sudden, you're talking about a really rare alien ship that you have. You bought at $250. We know prices are going to skyrocket on ships when they actually get purchasable in game. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a really good way to make money. So I'm not personally doing that, but I know a lot of people are. And I think not only is it kind of a crafty way to stockpile UBC that they bought with real money now, but I think it's also a good way to start on day one with a lot of money too. I wouldn't be surprised if CIG does something to kind of try and prevent some of that, but I don't know what they would do. And the last question is Captain Griginski on the topic of combat. What is your opinion on the leading and following pips, either following from the cursor or leading from the target? Um, honestly, I flip back and forth on these and it's a really hard question to answer right now because the, there's pip alignment issues, there's ESP issues, there's desync issues. So actually shooting at anything right now is challenging. You know, you could have your pips line up perfect and it's still not going to work. Um, I think in general, I prefer the leading pip. Um, it just feels a little bit more natural to me. I like the way it lines up my ship. I think it's um, a little bit more predictive of where people are going. It just feels a little bit better. Um, but hopefully those three issues that I just mentioned are actually fixed in um, 3.0. And that's, I do have plans to go back and revisit and do a follow-up video on that. So um, knowing that there's more interest in that, I'll make sure I actually get that out there. So that's it for this episode of The Inbox. If you guys have questions, please get them in. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more and have a great day. Take care. <laughs>